Hello, my name is Joel Christ. I'm a developer with Acona Systems, and today I'm going to do a walkthrough of the process of building master pages for Windows SharePoint Services 3.0 using site definitions in Visual Studio 2005. Today I'm in Microsoft Visual Studio 2005 with the extensions for Windows SharePoint Services installed. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new site definition project and then we're going to add a custom master page to that project and then configure the site definition to make use of that master page. And then we're going to build and deploy the site definition to a SharePoint site. So the first thing in Visual Studio we're going to do is to come in and create a new project. We're going to create a team site definition project and we're going to name it my team site and say OK. And Visual Studio goes ahead and generates the project for us with the onet.xml file open. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new master page to our project here. So the way we're going to do that is if I go into Windows Explorer, I'm going to start with a copy of the default.master page that comes with SharePoint services. And I'm going to use that as the beginning point and then modify that. That way I know I've got a good master page to start with. I'm going to modify that copy. So if I come in here now into the folder where I put my project, what I can do is navigate down to the site definition folder underneath the folders here for my project that Visual Studio created and paste that copy of the default.master in there. And I'm going to rename the file to my default.master and then save that. Now if I come back over here to Visual Studio into the Solution Explorer, what I can do is choose to come in here and add an existing item go into the site definition folder and come down here and tell it to view all files. And now I can see my default.master and go ahead and choose to add that to the project. And so now it's in there at this point here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead actually and modify that file. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my default.master. And I'm going to make a really simple change to it. I'm going to come down here and in the body portion of the file, I'm going to add an H1 tag. And I'm just going to put some simple text here. It says, my new master page and then go ahead and save the changes. Okay, so now at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and modify the onet.xml file to make use of the uh, my default.master page as the default master pages for the site. So the first thing I'm going to do in here to make this a little bit easier to see what's going on is I'm going to minimize some of the stuff that's here on the page um, so that I don't have to look at these other things, these other elements that I'm not concerned about. So the first thing we're going to modify is in the configurations element here, the configuration element. We're going to add some new markup here. And we're going to specify for the configuration element that the custom master URL is going to refer to the my default.master page that we just created and modified and we're ultimately going to stuff that thing into the master page gallery in the catalogs folder. And so we're going to specify both the system and the site um, master page as the my default.master page. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add ourselves a new module here and we're going to call it, give it a name of my default master. And then we're going to add a modules section down below, down below here. So let's paste that in. So what we've done here now is we now have we've defined for our configuration for this site definition here, a module with the name of my default master. That'll come down here and then the modules section of the modules element here, look for a module element with that name, my default master. It points at the master page category, or master page gallery rather, and within there then we reference with a file element um, the my default.master page that we're going to add as our default master page. So that should be all the changes we need to make in order for now this site definition to make use of our new master page for both the system and site master page. So now at this point here we're ready to go ahead build and deploy our site definition. So if I come in here and right click on the project name, I can choose to deploy. And Visual Studio goes ahead and builds the project. 
and then it goes ahead and deploys it to the SharePoint site. Okay, now that we've successfully built and deployed our site definition, we can come over to our SharePoint site and choose to create an instance of a new site based on that site definition. So if we come to Site Actions, Site Settings, and then come down here on Sites and Workspaces, and we're going to choose to create a new site. Okay, for the title of it, we're going to call it My Team Site. Uses a custom master page. And we're going to call it My Team Site for the URL off the base. And then we can come down here and choose our site definition by choosing the development tab and picking My Team Site, which is our site definition name. Leave all the other properties of their defaults and say create. Okay, and then it looks like SharePoint completes creating the new site based on our new site definition and takes us to it. And now we can see that we've got now our new, new master page being used. Here's our H1 header that we stuck onto our um, my master dot default or my, my default dot master page here. So my new master and it's now there on all the pages if we go to the shared documents library we see we are still using the same master page here. Okay, so by creating a site definition project in Visual Studio with the extensions for Windows SharePoint services installed, and then adding a custom master page to that and configuring the site definition to make use of that custom master page, it was very easy for us to then create a site in SharePoint that used our new master page.